Tomorrow we have a test over unit two, which is rate of change and linear functions. So I wanna review with you how to go through all of these different things, proportional, non-proportional, and functions. So write the equation for the line. M, remember, stands for slope, which is your change in Y over your change in X. So I'm going to count rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, over run, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. So remember that this is going to be 4 over 4. The line is going up, so we know the slope is positive. We can simplify this to a positive 1, or you can write 1 over 1. Your B, remember, is your Y-intercept. So right here, it is zero. And remember, our equation is always written y equals mx plus b. So my equation is y equals, we can put the one, you don't have to. x, you could put plus zero, but you're not gonna see it that way. So y is equal to x. This is proportional. It goes to the origin. And it is a function because it goes through, or because it passes the vertical line test, each x has only one y. That being said, we can look here. We see that the slope is going down, so this is negative. And I can count down one, one, two, three, four, over four. So negative one over four is my slope. That does not simplify. My b value is here. This is one. So y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 1. This is not proportional. It does not go through the origin. Which this one did. If I drew a vertical line, I could see that I have 1x for every 1y. So yes, this is a function. On number two, Mrs. Karpinski has already graded 35 papers, and she can grade at a rate of three papers every two minutes. So this is my B. My M is three papers every two minutes. So when we write our equation, I have Y equals three over two X plus 65. We talked in class about not writing this as 1.5 because remember, we want to be able to count rise over run when we do this. And you cannot, it's very hard to count up 1.5 and over one, whereas you can just count up three and over two. Create a table for the ordered pair. So you're simply plugging numbers in. We can plug in zero. So we say four times zero plus two, and we get zero plus two is just two. 4 times 1 plus 2, so 4 plus 2 is 6. And 4 times 2 plus 2, 8 plus 2 is 10. We can see, because there is an addition subtraction, this is non-proportional. We can also see that we have no repeat x's, so this is a function. So you need to be able, if I give you a, an equation, you need to be able to choose the correct table. Um, write an equation for the table and describe in words. So we talked about first to write our equation, we need an M and a B so we can write a Y equals. So my rate of change, this is going down, negative four. My X's are changing by positive two. So again, remember change in Y over change in X, negative four over two is negative two. You can also write negative two over one. My B value is not here. So there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. I know my M is negative two. I'm gonna have Y equals negative two X. We need to fill this in. You can take a coordinate. I have an X and I have a Y. I have an X and I have a Y. And we can plug it in. So I could say seven equals negative two times two plus something. I don't know what that is yet, my B value. And I can solve this. I can say 7 is equal to negative 4 plus something. Well, how do we solve this? I, oh, hold on. Time out. Look at what I did. Common mistake. 
I flip-flopped my x and my y value. Do you see what I did there? This is actually, I, this should have been here. So let me fix that. Please don't do that on the test. That was my fault. Be very cautious and pay attention to your details. So again, y, y, x, x. Sorry about that. This is a negative 14 and this is a 2. So I need to know what plus negative 14 is 2. Well, we learned in sixth grade to solve equations. Undo the add subtract, so b is 16. So we could write plus 16. The other method we talked about was working backwards. If I go back 2, no, I'm at 1. If I go back 4, I have the coordinate 1, 14. And then to get to 0, I need to add 1. So instead of subtracting 4, I'm subtracting 2. You can see that here. And this would be 16. So there is your B another way. You can do either method that you prefer. So here is my equation. Describe the rule you wrote in words. So you need to multiply x by negative 2 and add 16. That's all I need to see there. So make sure you can write a rule and you can describe it. On the next page, this one is going to be a free response, so make sure you're writing it on your page and not it on your Scantron. An entrance fee of $4 and each ride costs $2. You only pay an entrance fee once, so we can say y equals 4 plus 2x because they want us to use x for the number of rides. This one, the carnival has no entrance fee, so that means our b is 0. But it is $3 for each ride, so that is our m, so y equals 3x. So in order to decide how much each one costs, you can plug and chug, you can guess and check, or you can make a table where x is the number of rides. I'm going to write y1 or yr for the rodeo and yc for the carnival. So if I put a 0 here, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. If I put a 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. I can come over here, I'm going to put 0 here, 0 times 3 is 0, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, and I can see that at four rides it does cost the same, which is $12. Complete the table based on what you know. This is our Venn diagram that we did at the very, very beginning of the unit. If a table is proportional, then the y-x ratios are equal. If a graph is proportional, it goes through the origin or the 0, 0. If an equation, if an equation is proportional, y equals mx, or you can say y equals kx, so you can say only multiplies or divides, there's no addition. If a table is non-proportional, then your y-x ratios are not equal. If, it, if a graph is non-proportional, it um, the graph does not go through the origin. And on an equation, you have y equals mx plus b. So you have this addition subtraction piece in addition to multiply divide. Constant rate of change, if you remember on our Venn diagram, constant rate of change was in the middle where we had our proportional circle and then we had our non-proportional. Constant rate of change was here. So constant rate of change does not help you determine proportionality. It is for both. It is not going to help you find proportionality because you can see it is in both. It is the M in both a proportional and a non-proportional equation. So if it asks you if something's proportional based on a constant rate of change, you can't determine that. Greg's car can travel 22 miles on one gallon of gas. I'm going to make a proportion for this. I'm going to label my proportion. 
How many gallons is he going to use to drive 286 miles? Miles, I put it on the top, so I'm going to keep it on the top. And when I do this, I can cross multiply and divide, or because I'm multiplying by one, I can simply divide one. You will have a calculator if you wanted to shortcut yourself on these calculations. That is not going to be a problem. So we get 13 gallons. Mrs. Carpinski can grade at a rate of two papers every, or three papers, I apologize, every two minutes. Mr. Williams can grade twice as many papers, so he's going to have papers times two. So he's doing six papers in the same amount of time. So this is still two minutes. What is the constant of proportionality? Remember, that is your K, and K equals Y over X. In this case, papers over minutes. Can he grade papers versus the number of minutes, which we've written our proportion that way. Remember, order matters. If this is first, this is your numerator. This is twice, this is second, this is your denominator. Simplify if necessary. Well, I know that six over two is three. I can write three papers per one minute. Um, if this was a grittable, I would just put three. You could put the decimal if you wanted and the zeros. Identify each as a function or a non-function and explain. So remember, we only have two reasons if it is a function or a non-function. If I look at this one, I have individual x's. I have no repeat x's. So this is a function. We can say every x has one y value. Shorthand, no repeat x's. Whereas this one, if you look, the negative 2 is fine, but I've got three number 2s. So this is not a function, or this is a non-function. And why? We have repeat x's. You could also say um, 1x has three y values, and that is what makes it a non-function. If I look at a table, same thing. I'm looking here at my x's. They are all different. So that means this is a function. Even though the y's are repeated, that doesn't make a difference. We're looking only at the x's. So again, every x has its own y. Here. I have the negative 2 is fine, but look right here. I've got 2, 2, and 2. So again, this is a non-function. This is the same set of points as right here, but it's just depicted in a table. Um, and we can say, again, we have repeat x's. 1x has 3y values. On this graph, on a graph, we're looking at a vertical line test. So I'm going to draw a vertical line through my dots. I can see I have two dots that touch each vertical line. So this is a non-function because what that means is that my x's are repeated. So these coordinates right here, if I was to give them points and make a table, this coordinate is negative 2, 1, 2, negative 3, and negative 2, negative 4. So I can see that my x's are repeating. That's why it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So we can say, um, touches vertical line more than once or you can say it has repeat x's now when you look at this graph it only touches one time one time one time one time so this is a function we have no repeat x's or you can say touches the vertical line only once. And finally, on the back, when we're looking at a mapping, remember input and output. Input is your x, output is your y. Here, my negative 2 is going to two different coordinates. So I could write negative 2, negative 3. 
negative 2, negative 4. And I can see that my x's are repeating. So this is a non-function. Again, we have repeat x's. This is actually a mapping for the graph we looked at previously. And again, x and y. Now, all of these x's are going to the same coordinate. But if you make a table, negative 2, 1, 2, and 4, these all go to negative 3. Well, again, our x's are not repeating. So this is a function. No repeat x's. All right. If you have any questions, send me an email. Um, I hope you have a good night.